There's still something about that name. Why don't you just say that name? Say Jesus. Come on, strongholds are coming down because of Jesus. Come on, people are going to be healed today because of Jesus. Come on now, listen, I'm talking even outside of here because of Jesus. Say the name. Say Jesus. There's still something about that name. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of our praise. Come on, he's worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're just thanking him in advance for what's about to take place. Come on, just thank him. Thank him for your healing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. So good to be with you all. Praise God. I am Don Allen. Boy, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here this morning. Um, Boy, you guys make it easy. (laughs) You make it easy. Listen, I travel all over the place. It's not always easy. This is easy. Glory to God. The, The expectation that is here, I appreciate you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just touch your neighbor and tell them you're blessed. Tell your other neighbor you're blessed. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, team. You guys are amazing. Praise God. You can be seated for just a moment. Ooh, the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I'm just so good to be here with you. Uh, You're going to hear me say it maybe a few times. We've said it a few times over the weekend already. We've been ministering over in Clinton and and some meetings over there. Appreciate everybody that helped uh, make all this come together. Uh, And then you guys have built this as a Sunday of healing and miracles. Glory to God. Just putting it out there by faith, not just by title, but truly. uh, That is exactly what's going on here. Uh, healings and miracles. And and so I say that because you're going to hear me maybe say this a few different times. It's not about the absence of something. It's about the presence of someone. So that's why it's so easy when we say Jesus, that we can have an expectation because it's not about getting sickness out. It's not about getting disease out. It's not about getting the torment out. It's just about getting Jesus in. And if we can get Jesus in, then those things get out. Amen. And so you've already brought him in here when you walked in. He walked in with you. Praise God. If any two are gathered together in my name, did anybody come to gather in the name of Jesus? Well, then we've got this. This is an easy one this morning. Praise God. Well, I was just thinking of the big legacy. You know, Pastor really poured the legacy on me, you know, about the ministers and AA. I mean, he's got all the things in his office and AA Allen and all these things. And I was like, Lord, what am I, what am I going to preach on here, you know? And, uh, you know, trying to think of these deep things of God. Because i got to really impress you so I can get invited back or something. You know? No, I'm kidding. But, you know, you, you, you begin to just, you know, what are we doing here? And he said, we're getting people healed. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Amen. People came to get healed. Now, listen, here's the thing, what you're going to realize. When we talk about healing, what we've done is for years, the church has played with the fruit and we're not getting to the root. So this morning, you don't be surprised that when you come up thinking that you need something healed in your body, that really what it was is we're going to get to the root and we're going to pull that out. And then the fruit in your body is going to change, right? So, so we're not just going to go surface with this thing anymore because we're really going to change some things because what we've done for so long is we pruned, we pruned the fruit on the outside. So this is why people have to keep coming forward to get healed so many times because we keep pruning that and we're not getting to the root, but today we're going to get to the root. We're going to get to the root of some footholds that are trying to get into the body of Christ that are going to try to create strongholds later. So we're just going to go and handle that now because we're here to preach regional, right? We're not just thinking right here because listen, you all are the ambassadors for Christ. You all are the billboards for Jesus that when you go out there, they're reading you, they're watching you. And so we we want to make sure that what they're reading is a true representation of Jesus Christ. And that's you being healed and whole and set free. Glory to God and able to do the things that God called you to do. And we know that physical limitations are, are what holds us back probably more than anything else. Not that God's disqualifying you. We just do that to ourselves. As human beings, when we feel a thing, when we're experiencing something in our own lives, then that's what we do. And so, uh, praise God. So it won't be about the absence of something. It will be about the presence of someone this morning. And uh, we're going to dive into the Word of God. You know, uh, I love the Word of God. Say, I love the Word. See, you got to love the word because you know what? This was somebody before it was a book. Amen. If you love the word, you love Jesus. You can't say I love one without the other. He was the word that was made flesh and he dwelt among us. And you guys know how that is that you can get into this word and read one scripture a hundred times. And then the hundred and first time, all of a sudden something was different. It didn't change, but it changed you because this is a living thing. And so no matter what you think you know about healing, a lot of people have an academic faith. 
but I want to get a faith on the inside of you. Now, here's the cool thing. Our ministry has always been one that if you need healed, you need a miracle. We want to get you into a position to where you can receive one. But the second fold of that is so that you can then go out and do the same for others. That's what we're looking for you to do as believers to go minister the full gospel of Jesus Christ to this world. So I'm excited to be here with you this morning, and I love the Word of God. We're going to go over to Matthew 8 here. I discovered, you know, I, I, reading through the Bible, and man, I noticed one time when I was reading through Matthew 8, this thing is packed full of healing and miracles. And so I love looking at the, at the Word of God, and, and again, not about the absence of something, it's about the presence of someone and, and uh, getting Jesus on the scene and Moline, you know, come on. I mean, that's what we're, see, you got to say that because I graduated from Rhema Bible, if you don't. You know, we graduated from Rhema, so it has to rhyme to be anointed. You, you know, it doesn't count if it's not. Amen. It's all right if we have fun, right? This was supposed to be fun. You're Christian. You didn't have to check fun at the door when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's times we read in the Bible that he leapt and he twirled and he celebrated and your father sings over you. He's not mad at you. He loves you. Amen. Be sure that you stop by our table back here. We've got a lot of products that are going to help you. There are some free things there as well. Not just making shameless plugs to get your money. There are some uh, things there that will really help you uh, in your walk. And I would encourage you to go check out uh, the book. Don't let it freak you out. So many people, seven days with a witch. Ooh. Oh, oh, oh. Friends, this is a love story. This is, where, this is where God took the high witch of the four corners. And instead of beating hell out of her, loved hell out of her. And saved this woman. But it's a great insight into spiritual warfare. Uh, from an enemy standpoint. Somebody that was in witchcraft for over 30 years. Now telling me how they were able to infiltrate the church. And what it is that we can do to stop it. So check that out. There's some books by Pastor David there as well. There's some free things there. Anyway, just go, please go check all those things out. And we can talk about all that later. But I want you to look with me. Because today we're, we're here to be healed. We're here to discover healing through the word of God. In Matthew 8. I, I love this. And here's the question, because we, we can answer. I know you can give me the answer. If I say, who does God heal? Oh, he heals everybody. I know you can say those things. But what I discovered is a lot of people, we begin to form new doctrines when we find ourselves sick or diseased long enough. Yet I love Jesus. I know he's a healer. I know, but then we start to form some new doctrines when we don't truly, you know, we always say it this way. Don't, don't form your theology in the middle of a crisis. <laughs> Let's have some things figured out already. Let's not be caught off guard by what it is that Satan is doing because he will attack your flesh. We know as Christians, we're not immune to that. I don't know about you. My Christianity was not uh, unicorns, cotton candy, and rainbows all the time. <laughs> you know, but the, he talks about the two storms in Matthew 7. Isn't that right? Uh, the two different houses, but it's the same storms. There's a way to weather the storm and get through it and, and be on top of it or some will fall. Let's get founded on the word this morning. Amen. Let's start over here in Matthew 8. I want you to see some things here. In Matthew 8, starting in verse 1, he's coming down from the mountain. Great multitudes are following him. And behold, there came a leper worshiping him, saying, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. This is where millions of believers are right now. Millions of believers. That's not an exaggeration. Millions of believers don't believe that God is always willing to do so. Nobody's going to question his ability. We hear it all the time. God is able. God is able. Nobody would say that God cannot. I just don't know if he would for me. I don't know if he would do it for me. Now look at this with, with two sets of eyes. I, a lot of times we, we take it that way. Or when we're ministering to others, I don't know if he will for them. And we begin to judge people and we begin to look at people. You know, we, we really do have to stop regarding people by the flesh. Come on. We don't wrestle with flesh and blood anyway. Even an enemy, we, we should not regard by the flesh. We really need to begin to look at the spirit realm that's behind that. But this, this here, and I'm going to say this statement, and it's biblically correct. It is God's will to heal you all the time of anything, all the time, 100% of the time, every time. That makes some, a lot of folks uncomfortable because we don't feel like we are healed 100% of the time, all the time. That's not what I said. I said it is his will that you would be. It is his will that you would be. As a matter of fact, it's something so simple as this. I was in Jefferson City. That's where our capital is. We used to preach at our capital every Thursday night in the state capital, right in the rotunda. They allowed us to come into Missouri and preach Jesus every Thursday night, right there in front of all the senators and representatives and the governor, everybody. And so what we were doing was uh, there was a gentleman that was brought a young kid, and it's a super long story, but my point being this about the will of God, there was a young man brought in who was crippled from birth. 
never had walked in his life, crippled up in a wheelchair. His, his 12-year-old sister brought her brother because somebody at youth said, God will heal him if he comes. Somebody in the youth group said that to her. And so that was on Wednesday. And on Thursday, she's bringing a 12-year-old girl is bringing her brother knowing that God will heal my crippled brother who's never walked body twisted up. My point being this, when it came to that time to minister to him and she, she shoved him up there, I mean, before I could even hardly get the altar call out of my mouth, she had such an expectation at 12 years old that her brother would be healed, that she shoves him up to the front before I'm even finished, that he's going to be first. And so I walked over to him and I'm, I'm getting the anointing and I'm getting ready. And all of a sudden, these are the words that I heard. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. God, there are no little boys in heaven in wheelchairs. Heal this boy in Jesus' name. I'm talking about the willingness of God. His will is that it would be as in heaven. And that boy stood to his feet and pushed an empty wheelchair out that night. My favorite part of that story is this, you know, we're all emotional. We're all just, you know, I mean, we're, we're celebrating, you know, we're so happy. He's pushing this chair out. It's taken him forever. You know, he's not, he's not quick yet. His muscles are developing. I'm th- bones are twisting, you know? And so he's pushing this out and the mom goes and pulls up in this, in this uh, handicapped van, you know, where the, the thing comes down and they usually push him up in there and strap him down. The mom comes pulling up and we're all kind of hugging and we're so excited. We're just Oh, this is so awesome. And his sister's just videoing him on her phone. And she's like, my brother, you know, and, and the mom's crying and we're all crying. And he's just pushing that chair. And we get there and we're all kind of at that point where he's going to, they're going to get in the car and, or into the van. And he turns around and we're all like, yes. He said, shotgun. He said, what? He's never got to ride in the front of the van. <laughs> He called shotgun and jumped in that front seat and waved, just smiling. Glory to God. It is God's will. Come on now, listen. Who, who will he hear? Listen, here's a leper. Here's a leper. Here's this man. He's a, he's a social outcast. His life is over. Now listen, he's an outcast. Now find yourself in these stories today. He's a social outcast. Listen, nobody's coming to the house anymore. Nobody's coming to visit this guy anymore. Isn't that how it is? Man, we get a diagnosis and we're going to beat this thing. But if it goes long enough, you know, people start to drop off. They see at Walmart, they go to the other aisle. That's, that's the reality. That's where this man is, is he's a social outcast. He's terminal. He's been handed a walking death sentence. I mean, this is a dead man walking. They've, they've stamped a, a, a amount of days that he's expected to live. Right? They've given him a life expectancy. Well, people with this make it this far. Have you heard things like that before? Listen, I don't know whose reports you're believing, but I've always got me another one. We got to start believing the report of the Lord. So this man approaches Jesus. He's not sure about his willingness to heal him. And again, I'm sure he does just like we do. Many of us, he's approaching Jesus. Now, the story doesn't say that, but we could could think that it's quite possible that as he's falling before Jesus, and I know you can, I'm just not sure that you will. He's maybe thinking of his sins that he's committed. Now, I'm talking about as a healing minister. These are the things that I hear all the time. I walk in on somebody to go minister to him, and the first thing they want to do is start a confessional. Well, I haven't been in church in a long, and I haven't done the thing in in this one time I I kissed, you know. Guys, watch this story. This man, it could be all these different things that he was saying. But look at this. This man says, I know you can, and if you will, what was Jesus' answer to such a question? What did Jesus say to this man who said, listen, I, I know you can. I just don't know if you will. Is he hearing? Did this man hear all the things that the church is hearing? Well, I could. Have you been tithing? You should tithe. But have you been tithing? Have you been good enough? I don't know what good enough is. On my best day, I could always be better, I suppose. Right? All the different things that we tie to people's healings and our own healing when we come to him and we feel like we got to bargain with Jesus. You don't have to bargain with Jesus. He wants to heal you. You don't have to convince him of anything. He wants to heal you. Have you been good? You've been tithing? What'd you do to open yourself up for this leprosy? 
These aren't the things that we're hearing here. We don't see Jesus interviewing this man about anything. The man had a question. Jesus answered the question. And he answered it for all of eternity because we see it right here. He says, I will. I love one translation says it this way. Of course I will. Of co- Can you see Jesus saying that today when you're walking up? And say, him just saying, of course. Of course I will. Why would he say that? Because Jesus is a, d- a direct physical revelation of who his father was. Isn't that right? His father didn't heal. His father was healing. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that heals. It's not what he does. It's who he is. So Jesus couldn't help but heal because it was in his DNA to heal. What's in your DNA? Believers lay hands on the sick and they show, why? Because it's in your DNA that when your hand touches the hand of a sick person, your DNA, his DNA gets on the inside of them. And I love that Jesus, he's not worried about what this man that's going to affect him. Jesus knows what I got's going to infect this man. What I've got in the inside of me is greater than. Listen, cancer is great in its power. It takes out a lot of people, but he's greater. Come on, he's greater. And Jesus put forth his hand, and in in, in verse 3, he put forth his hand and he touched him. This is contagious. This is a deadly, contagious disease. And Jesus touches this man. Do you believe that will touch somebody today? Now, this story is in Mark and Luke as well. And one of them said he was moved with compassion. Is Jesus still compassionate today? See, he loves you. He's not doing this out of duty. He's doing it because he's madly in love with you. He's not just been tolerating you. He loves you, friends. He loves you. Come on, somebody's got a hold of it. And immediately this man's leprosy was cleansed. Immediately it was cleansed. So we see him uh, healing the incurable outcasts that aren't even sure if he would. So if that's you today, here's your story. You may not be sure, but the answer is this, I will, and you won't find an I won't when it comes to healing in your Bible. There are no I won'ts, it's always I will. So you can receive that this morning. In verse 5, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant lies home sick with the palsy. I'd be sick of the palsy too. Sick of the palsy. Grievously tormented. Here we have a man seeking healing for somebody else. This is how amazing God is. This man's coming. This is like two or three people down the line. Now, that man's not even there. He's coming to seek a healing for an employee. Is it enough? Is it enough that you could just come and say, I want him healed because I like him? Again, we try to bargain. We try to bargain with him all the time. Well, Father, I need him to do this, and I need him to do that, and I need it. He just said, listen, this guy's really good at what he does, and I need him. Would you heal him? (laughs) I I need this guy around. Look at this. This this is Jesus' response, and I love this. When they they came and they asked him about this man, I love, again, no interview process. Jesus has not met this man. This is two or three people down the line, right? Hey, we want you to come and see a guy. I know a guy. And I want you to come see this guy. And so I love this because what's Jesus' immediate response? I will come and heal him. He doesn't even know this guy. He could be Muslim. (gasps) He may not believe like we believe. He didn't ask. Will you come and heal him? I will come and heal him. That was the answer. That's your answer. Before Jesus knew anything about him, that's it. The centurion answer said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. I mean, he doesn't feel worthy that Jesus should show up in the house. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. I love that he said this because do you understand when he's talking about speaking the word, this is the great equalizer. See, we hear this a lot in the circles that I grew up in. So-and-so is so anointed, meaning that you may not be, but they really are, right? They're so anointed for the word is anointed. Let's take the word away from you, big boy, and see how anointed you are. This is the great equalizer, friends. The word. What about the anointing on the word? Because on my worst day, it's still having its best day. Come on, that's the encouragement for you that you are anointed because the word you have is anointed. Yeah, the word. Hey, how about that? Didn't even plan that. The word is anointed. Glory to God. Listen, this is the great equalizer, friends. On your worst day, when you ain't feeling it, the word's got it. Holy Spirit's still having his best day when you're having your worst day. Come on. 
So he's healing a leper. He wasn't even sure if it was his will to do so, laid hands on him. Now we have a a guy here. He's not even met this man and, and he doesn't know anything about it. And they're being told, I don't want you to come, but just speak a word. Just speak a word. Come on. And this man speak a word and Jesus speaks a word. And this is amazing. I love what this man says. He says, for I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. And he goes to another, come and he comes to my servant, do this. And he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he marveled. And he said to those guys that followed, I mean, can you imagine Jesus marveling? I've not found such great faith. in." can you imagine Jesus saying that? I have not found such great faith, not even in all of Israel. And so here's what's cool, though. You maybe missed this. This is what this man was saying was so profound. He said, Jesus, I know that you have the authority to say sickness go and it will go and healing come and it will come. That's what this man was talking about. He wasn't talking about soldiers. and He said, I know you have the authority to say something and those things have to obey you. They have to. So what I need you to know is that your God will find a way to get somebody healed. So he can't, he's not getting to this man. He's not going to this man. Uh, he laid hands on the first one. But now this man, he's just speaking a word. He's just saying something. Why? Because listen, you've been handed that same authority. You've been handed the same authority to begin to say some things and things are going to obey you. Listen, guys, this, is the se- this isn't the season of confessions in the way that we were raised. I think I brought this up the other night at our meeting When God's word, there's a couple purposes for God's word. The primary purpose of God's word is not to communicate a point. If I say C-A-T, I've communicated cat to you, yes? That's not the main purpose of God's word. The main purpose of speaking God's word, and I'm talking about spirit breath. I'm talking about inspired word. Yes, it's to communicate a point, but the real purpose is to create a thing. Isn't that how he did it in Genesis? And God said, and it was. And God said, and it was. And God said, and it was. You have the same creative ability on the inside of you because he's your father. You were made in his image and his likeness to be able to speak the word of God. And Jesus said unto the centurion, go your way as you believed, so it be done unto you. That servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Guys, I know it works because it was 1110 at Sunrise Bible Church in Sunrise Beach, Missouri, when a man stood up and said, I have to go home. My wife is in kidney failure right now. And I said, you stop right there and we're going we're gonna to do something. And I didn't pray. I spoke. I spoke. I said, Shana Shriver, your kidneys work now in the name of Jesus. I said, look at the clock, 1110. Go home to your wife. He went home and she's sitting there totally healed. He said, when did it happen? We know when it happened. Right when we spoke the word. That's exactly what happened in this story. When did that happen? They said, it was right when Jesus said the words. Come on, we have authority, friends. So we have an outcast, terminal, incurable healed. We have a man that Jesus never met. He's an employee, sent a word. This next one in verse 14. And when Jesus was coming to Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick with a fever. Does God heal (laughs) mother-in-laws? Amen. All the mother-in-laws said amen. That's your chance right there. Here's a woman that's got a fever. Now this one's not like the other ones. Now these other ones were terminal. Right? The other ones, these, this isn't a cancer, it's a fever. Not to say that fevers couldn't be dangerous. But here we see a fever. It's not leprosy, it's something that's not incurable. And yet we find Jesus taking issue with it because isn't it true we let the little things go? I hear it all the time. I could pray for you, well, but so-and-so needs it worse. Or we, we'll sleep it off, we'll take some medications, we'll do a bunch of other things. We let some of the little things go. And what we're doing is we're adapting to bondage. Well, if I just walk this way, I'm going to be, you weren't created to walk that way. Jesus takes issue with it. And he touched her hand and the fever left her. I like Dr. Luke's account. You know, he's a, he was a doctor. There's no indication that he quit being a doctor once he started following Jesus. See, that's the big thing about faith healers, right? Oh, you say, no, that's not the truth. The co-founder of our ministry has never quit his job at the hospital. We're a healing ministry, and he's been working at a hospital for 25 years. Come on now, listen. Don't get all weird on me. But watch this now. He touched her hand. In Luke 4, 39, it says, and he stood over her, and he rebuked the fever. No, he didn't rebuke Satan. He spoke right to a fever. Now, listen, we see Jesus speaking to wind and waves, to trees, to demons, and now he speaks to a fever. And I don't know if you know the good news. If a fever can hear, a cancer can hear. 
If a fever can hear, then demonic torment and issues in your body, they can hear. But what are we saying to them? Usually what we're saying is, this thing's killing me. Yeah. Come on. He spoke right to a fever. Tumors can hear and pain can hear. Listen, Job 22 says, I shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto me. Established. That's not a flighty thing. Established. It'll be established unto me. What are you saying to sickness and disease? Listen, if you don't know what to say, I've got a free 101 healing scripture CD right back here. Free 101 healing scripture CD. If you don't know what to say, start listening to that. A little uh, six-year-old boy came to one of our meetings and he had had a a rash all over his body and his mom was there with him sitting there and uh, she had gotten that CD and she was playing it day and night in in the CD player in his room to get rid of this, some rash that the doctors couldn't seem to figure out. And so uh, he comes up there and she says, you know, we listen to it every night and he said, well, I don't know. I don't know everything, but I know that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And he began, the six-year-old, that's how the CD starts. He starts rattling off the CD. He's rattling it. He knows all 101 scriptures on that CD. Glory to God. He was healed, by the way. Who will God heal? Terminal outcast laid his hands on him. Paralyzed employee spoke a word. Didn't know anything about the guy. And now he speaks to a fever. He touches this woman. It says, when evening came, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick. Now he's healing unbelievers. Now he's healing unbelievers. Did you know he's still a healer to the believer and the unbeliever? It doesn't change who he is just because of who they are. Come on now. They weren't seeking God. They're worshiping the devil. Demon possessed people, and he healed them. I'm saying this because so many of us have disqualified ourselves because of X, Y, Z, and he's healing demon-possessed people. Your sons and daughters. He loved you as a sinner. What makes you think he's mad at you now? (laughs) That's what we do. We get along in our Christianity, and we feel like at some point after being a son or a daughter, we hit this dip where my father's mad at me. He loved you at your worst. What makes you think he's so mad at you now as a son and a daughter? He healed them that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying himself took our infirmities and he bare our sicknesses. Just a quick side note for all those that want to argue Isaiah there. Uh, I want to look at it here. Just I, I want to look at this because I love the word of God because it backs itself up. There's no discrepancies in the word. There's not. There's no contradictions or, or things like that in the word. People think there are, but you got to do your homework. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, other translations go into more detail. This is for the King James folks. Um, that love this one, but uh, some who want to argue about this. Some folks don't believe that the Bible is saying that we could be physically healed. He meant spiritually. That's what people like to argue. Well, he meant spiritual healing. We can't expect to be physically healed. He meant spiritually, spiritually healed. People argue this. I, I want to answer that. Surely, uh, look at verses four and five. Surely he has borne our griefs. We know this, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. That's Isaiah 53, four and five. So when we say by his stripes, we are healed, we're talking about from a a physical standpoint, but there's others that are gonna say he meant that spiritually. He was talking spiritually. Well, that would, maybe you could make that case, except when we go back into Matthew 8, and again, we're looking at this in context, and so far, everything about Matthew has been about physical healing. Isn't that right? All this is about physical healing taking place. A leper, a servant, a mother-in-law. Now we see all these others are healed, and he said, well, of course they were healed, because it's just a fulfillment of what he said over in Isaiah. He's just fulfilling the prophecy that we would be healed, that he carried our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. Not, not just spiritually, he said physically. You got to look at it in context. Physically. Look at it in the uh, Amplified. I like it a little better. Surely he has borne our griefs and sicknesses. This is Matthew 8. Uh, but in the Amplified of, of uh, Isaiah 53, it says, Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, our distresses. He carried our sorrows and pains. Listen, why are we mentioning sorrows and pains? Sometimes we got a root. Sometimes we got to get to a root. He mixed this in here with healing of physical things because, like I mentioned, sometimes we got to to get down to a root. 
we got to get to a root and get some things plucked out, but he wanted you to know that we can, that he would do that. We ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted as with leprosy, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace. Again, some of you just need to get your peace back. I mean, some of you don't even remember what it was to be peaceful anymore. Needful to obtain peace and well-being was upon him, and with his stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. So we see incurable outcasts. By the way, there are no outcasts with him. Amen. Some he never met, a woman with a fever. Now he heals these people who had uh, previously, and I mean maybe even just moments ago, they had devils in them. They had been worshiping Satan, and he heals these people. We know back in Numbers 21, the people were complaining against God and against Moses, and they were in sin. How many of you know you can't complain and gripe in faith? I've tried. It doesn't work. These people are griping, they're complaining, they're in sin, they're full of doubt, they're complaining against God, and suddenly we know that these poisonous snakes, they begin to come into the camp, and they're biting people, and they've got venom running through their veins, and babies are crying, and I mean, just imagine the scene, how chaotic it probably was, all these things happen, and and I love this because a good leader, Moses, still goes to God on their behalf. They're, they're, They're slamming this guy, they're thrashing this guy, and he still goes to God on their behalf. You gotta know when you got you some good, good leaders. Right? You got some good leaders that are like that. I know I've met them. You've got some people that are going to go to bat for you here. But I love this because he goes to God. He instructs him to make that serpent on a pole. And and everybody that looks at it, we just know it's a type and shadow of Jesus being high and lifted up when you begin to look at this. And uh, those that just bad-mouthed God and bad-mouthed Moses. Listen, these people were in sin. I mean, they were mad. They were angry with God. And in just a moment of time, they were able to look and be healed. So maybe you've been mad at God. Maybe you've been upset with God. It's okay. Don't keep doing it. But look, here's the thing. Look to Jesus and you're still going to be healed. You've got to find yourself in here. You don't have to raise your hand. I know a bunch of you have been mad at God. I know a bunch of you have questioned God in, in times past and been upset with him. But friends, that doesn't disqualify you from being able to receive a healing today. Matthew 19, two great multitudes followed him and he healed them there. Matthew 21, 14. We begin to see in the, the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Luke 6, 19, the whole multitude sought to touch him for there went virtue out of him and he healed them all. Matthew 12, 15, but when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence. Great multitudes followed him and he healed them all. Luke 9, 11, and the people, when they knew it, they followed him and they received him and they spoke unto him the kingdom of God and he healed every single one of them that had need of healing. Matthew 15, 30, great multitudes came, having with them those that were lame and blind and dumb and maimed, many others, and they cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. Luke 4, 40, when the sun was setting, all they that had any sickness with diverse diseases, they brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every single one of them and healed them all. Matthew 4, 24, his fame went out through all of Syria and they brought unto him all the sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments and possessed with devils and lunatics, those with palsy, and he healed them. Now this one says they brought unto Jesus those that were possessed with devil. Again, not people that were what we would consider good people and they're getting healed. Again, what makes you think he won't heal you? He healed them. They didn't even have to get into a Bible study. Then we got lunatics, people that were out of their minds, people that couldn't even think straight. They couldn't even talk right. They couldn't give us the right faith confessions. And he healed them too. People with Alzheimer's. People with mental issues that we we don't think what's going on, but the spirit man does. Come on, we got to start ministering to the spirit man. We can't regard them by the flesh. People that we would say, man, they don't understand. Yes, they do. They understand right here. Come on, we can't cast people like that to the side, guys. Come on, just because they can't lock eyes with you, their spirit man is screaming for something to be done on the inside of them. I just always figured this God was the maker of the human body, so it seemed very realistic to me that if he made them, he can fix them. (laughs) Amen. That if you needed body parts, that he had them. (laughs) That he knew, you know, I I know people that own high-end cars, and they don't like it. Take it down to Billy Bob's and get the wrong, right? No, they they want everything original. Isn't that right? So I say that to say that, hey, we can go back to the original, to the original garage, if you will, where he's got the parts that are original parts, and he can begin to put those back into you. Listen, if you need the existing facility remodeled, he can do that, or he'll just make all things new. Whichever, whichever you need today, he'll do either one. Amen? 
He can replace some things. So let me tell you this story. This is one of my absolute favorites, and I should have brought the newspaper article with me. Um, Linda Sanchez, Lebanon, Missouri. So we, my father-in-law had a church where we hosted a food program. Once a month, 400 families would come in, and we would give them enough food for a week. Uh, the Missouri Food Bank was giving us stuff, and we could hand out tons and tons of food. And so in that, lots of people would come through. And of course, being uh, a lot of lower income folk, they couldn't afford medical care anyway. Uh, So you got to see a lot of people and we got to minister to a lot of people in the community that would come to us for this feeding program. Uh, But what happened was, is I had just come back from somewhere and I was all excited. This is back when I was working construction. I used to hang drywall and I was working with uh, a crusty crew, if you will, the Motley crew, if you will. But I was in there and I would always come back and they're talking about their weekend exploits, you know, who, what, why, when, and where they did. And so I'm coming in there and I'm talking about miracles because Saturday, man, we would see miracles on that Saturday when people were coming in and I'm talking about miracles. And I, I came in this particular day and I'm like, oh yeah, a woman came in with a cast on her arm and we cut the cast off and her arm was healed. I mean, right there in the parking lot, you know, of a food giveaway program. And they're like, come on. So this big guy, Trey Shriver, he stands up and he's 275 pounds, ex-military, 6'4". I want to see some miracles. And I said, well, you ever been anywhere where there are any? You can't just stand here and talk about one to see. You got to get somewhere where they're happening. I said, you come, you come with me to that food program and you'll see some miracles. All right, I'll be there. So, hey, praise God for his desire. Amen. Sure enough, he shows up. People are coming through. And what we would do is people would come in, they'd get their food. You'd box it up for them. And then you'd walk them out to their car. You'd help load that. And you would offer prayer to people. You'd pray with people. And it wasn't a requirement to get the food, but you would offer. And and 99% of the time people wanted you to pray. So we're, we're, we're coming through, and, and nothing's really happening. I mean, you know, a little toe felt better. A lady's headache disappeared. That ain't what he's there for. You know, he's looking to be like, come on, man. And so we're standing there, and I remember I'm leaning up against some boxes, and he's out in front of me, and we're just kind of waiting for the next group to come through. And here comes Linda Sanchez. Now, I'd seen Linda for three years coming to this food program, and she's blind. She's got on the glasses that cover up half her face. And she's got her stick and her big uh, son-in-law, Samoan guy, son-in-law would bring her in as, as the escort and he refused prayer. He was very vocal about how he felt about prayer. He didn't want prayer. Give me my food and I'm getting out of here. And he was very protective of her, but he was not a nice guy. So we're standing there and she comes walking in and me, a man of great faith and power, have ignored her for three years. I believe in miracles, just not that one. And so, of course, Trey spins around and he says, that one. We're walking that one out. And I was like, oh, Jesus. I literally, no, I literally turned around away from him and I said, oh, Jesus. And these are the words I heard. Can I do it? Yes, sir, you can. He said, then get outside. (laughs) Say amen. (laughs) He may not talk to you that way, but he talks to me that way sometimes. Get outside. I was like, yes, sir. Hey, Hey, that's all pressure off of me. I'm not the healer, glory to God. Come on, amen. We, we forget that sometimes, that you're not some performance monkey here, right? Listen, come on, you don't have to do anything except be a vessel. Listen, this cord has no power, but when it's plugged in, but by itself, it's nothing. But when you plug it in and plug something into the other end, well, we got us something, Amen. So he said, get out there. So I'm like, oh, Lord. Well, I mean, we're working against a couple different things. I mean, she's blind. I don't know anything other than she's blind. I mean, we've seen her for three years, didn't talk to her because he wouldn't let you. He's bigger than my big guy, right? I got Trey. He's too, this guy's bigger than that, the son-in-law. So I'm like, we can't even, we can't even bully our way into this miracle. This guy's bigger and he's mean. And so we're walking her outside and we're taking her out to the car. And so I'm trying to get Trey to tie him up at the trunk, loading food wrong. You know, just whatever you got to do. And so what he would always do is go put her in the car and close the door. And then he'd stand back there and make sure you loaded it right. And then they'd leave. So I just sneak around to the side of the car and the trunk lid's up there. And I'm Trey's on this side and he's on the other side. And I'm I'm hoping he's messing it up real good. And so I'm over here and I open that door and I said, "Uh, Linda, can I pray with you? And she said, sure. And I said, here, I need you to get out of the car. And so I'm spinning her around and I'm trying to get her out of the car. And so as I begin to pull her out of the car, this is what I heard the Lord say. And he'll reveal things to you guys right out of the word of God, because this word still works today. It's still applicable for today. And so what I did is I spun her around. And this is the story that I thought of. This is the story that Holy Spirit revealed to me. I said, Linda, there's a boy in the Bible. 
And I said, it, it, that boy was born blind. And the disciples, they begin to ask Jesus, why is he, because we always got to find a reason. Why is this boy blind? Is it because his parents sinned? And Jesus said, no, that's not why. And, and, and so did he sin? And, and Jesus said, no, that's not why. And Jesus said, it's so I can work the works. And I said, Linda, what he really meant there was, I don't care why he's blind. What are we going to do about it? And I said, and he healed that blind boy, Linda. Do you believe that story? She shook her head. She said, yes, I do. I said, then you're going to be healed right now. And so I said, right now in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you for healing Linda's eyes. Open your eyes right now in the name of Jesus and read my name tag. I had a name tag on. And, all, you know, she's got them glasses on. I can't tell. And she leans in and she said, your name is Dennis. I said, no, blink hard twice and read my name tag. She said, your name is Donnie. That car is red. That tree is green. Well, now big boy's coming around and my big boy's coming around. And they're like, what's going on? And oh, I mean, we're celebrating and we're crying and we're running and we're laughing. And I mean, we're just, wow, Linda can see. And, we're, and so I'm running inside to tell everybody. And we come back out and they're gone. Nobody's believing that Linda. They all know Linda. So the next month rolls around. We don't, I don't know where Linda is. We don't know. And the next month rolls around. And so we're all standing there at the door and we're chit-chatting. And the lady walks in and she's like, excuse me. And yes, ma'am, you need to get in line like everybody else. She said, you all don't know who I am, do you? It's me, Linda. We've never seen her without. And so we're just, oh, glory to God, it's Linda. And she can see and we're all celebrating. She said, no, guys, you don't understand. We said, yeah, 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 you can see. She said, no, I had no eyes. I had no eyeballs in my head. She's standing here with two beautiful blue eyes. Now listen, you can believe it or not, but here's the thing. A reporter caught on to this story and went and checked with her doctor, and I've got a whole newspaper article about it, and indeed she had no eyes. I'm saying that to say if you need new ones, he's got it. He's got him. He made the human eye. Come on, somebody. If you need a creative miracle today, we have a creative God. Amen. We see the soldiers coming. I'm going to wrap up with this. We see the soldiers coming to take Jesus to his death. And we have Malchus. We have Malchus here. This is a guy that believes that Jesus is enemy number one. That Jesus is a blasphemer. That Jesus is the enemy of the church. This man is a criminal. He's an enemy of the state. And we're going to take him to his death. And we know that Peter, he gets mad. Peter meant what he said. I'm with you to the end. Even though he, he wavered. But he meant it, man. And he took that man's ear off. I mean, this is officer down. This is shots fired. I mean, this man is screaming. His ear is missing. There's darkness. Jesus could have taken. If anybody, if anybody, if Jesus was ever going to show us one jerk in the Bible that deserved to be sick or diseased or in pain, it's this guy that's coming to take him to his death. And he just couldn't do it. He had to reach down in the middle of this chaos, knowing that I could get out of here and live a little while longer. And he just couldn't leave a man sitting there who was his enemy, meaning harm to him. He just couldn't leave him there with one ear because you weren't made with one ear. <laughs> my father didn't make you made in my image and my likeness. I got both of mine. You need both of yours. And he reaches down and whether he created a new one or picked the old one up out of the dirt, I don't know. And I don't care. I just know that that man all of a sudden had an ear. Out of anybody, that a man that absolutely hated Jesus, hated him, and he wouldn't leave him that way. He won't leave you. He won't leave you lacking today. Anything that you can imagine Jesus having is yours. Anything that you can't imagine Jesus having, this is what he was saying, is we're made in the same image and likeness. Even this man that wants to kill me, he was made in the image of my father. And I cannot leave him there lacking some body part. So who can say that healing has passed? How can we say when the apostles picked right up and they went and healed people? What argument is there that we have? We see Jesus telling the disciples, we're almost done in Matthew 10, 1. When he called unto him the 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits. Again, what are we doing? We're talking about root. Power over unclean spirits to cast them out and then to heal all manner of sickness. In all manner of disease. He turns around in Luke 10 and he commissions the 70. And I love that he tells them, listen, I'm sending you out and it isn't going to be nice. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be great. But I'm going to send you out there and you're going to go heal the sick they're in. And when you go heal them, you're going to tell them that the kingdom has just come nigh you. I'm talking about you standing in front of somebody and all of the kingdom is standing in front of them because you're there. You are a move of God going somewhere to happen. We don't need to wait on a move of God. You are the move of God. He said, tell them.
tell them that the kingdom is here because you're standing here. He didn't die to get you into heaven. He wanted heaven to get into you. Come on. We've got heaven on the inside of us. In Mark 16, he says, go into all the world. And we know that he talks about a lot of things, but we know it ends with the miraculous again when he says, and believers will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That was for the church. That was for us. And then it says that he went forth and he preached everywhere and the Lord worked with them, confirming the word that they were preaching with signs following. This is what separates you and I from any other religion is that we've got a book that's alive and we can manifest what it says. That through the power of the Holy Spirit, that the words on these pages manifest into people's lives. So the question, well, who would God heal? Well, the answer is you. Every one of you. He'll heal you today. I'm going to invite you to come forward today. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. Some of you are going to get into your business. We're going to get to the root. But listen, if we can get that root out, you're going to be able to keep your healing. Amen. But listen, we're going to minister to you. You're going to receive the healing power of God. You're going to walk out of here healed and whole in the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you believe? Come on, do you believe it? Then stand to your feet and come forward. You need ministered to, just line up shoulder to shoulder right up here in the front. We're going to minister to you. Those of you that don't need it, I want you to be holding up your brothers and sisters right here this morning. Amen. Come on, be believing with them. Be believing with them. Listen, if we have to, we'll line you up down the sides. That's all right. Guys, listen, I know... I know that it's going to take a minute. Don't bail. It might take a minute. Come on, it's that important though, guys. It's important, amen? Come on, let's get this today. What if this would be the last time that you had to come forward for this? Amen? Come on, wouldn't that be awesome? Praise God, today can be that day. I'm believing that it is. You guys promoted this so hard and really put those healing and miracles this Sunday. Come on, so we're going to be led by Holy Spirit. We'll lay hands on some of you. Some of you will speak to. Some of you will anoint you with oil. Whatever it is that he wants to do. Amen. But know this, you're leaving here healed today. Why don't you just go ahead and lift your hands right now. And I want you to tell the Lord what it is that you want. We see Jesus doing this with people. What do you want? And they would say, I want my sight back. They would just tell him. They wouldn't even hold it back. I don't want to see better. I want my sight back. You go ahead and tell him what it is that you want. You can play something for us. That would be awesome. Praise God. Listen, we're going to tap into a few other folks that are here today that are going to help minister to you. Don't leave here without your healing. Don't do it. Not this time. Come on. Today's your day. Thank you, Jesus. Are we ready?
extravagant you are, extravagant you are, extravagant you are, so limitless you are, extravagant in your love, extravagant in your power, extravagant you are, you are. Where's our prayer team? Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Prayer team, prayer team, prayer team. All right. You guys believe in healing? Yeah. You believe in miracles? Yeah. And I'm talking about you laying hands on people and they don't leave here the same. Then let's get to it. Come on, let's get them. Amen. Now, those of you that are here, don't you dare get into that familiarity. Oh, well, I wanted Donnie to do it. I can't do anything for you. <laughs> Glory to God. It's the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead. Right? Come on now. Listen, these people are going to lay hands on you right now in the name of Jesus. And I believe that if they're, listen, if they got to get to the root, they're going to get to the root. If it's just something that they can lay hands on and go on, you're going to be healed today. Don't, listen, it's not, it's not about what's being poured out as much as it's about the capacity to receive. You can have as much of God as you want to have in here today. Amen. So begin to receive it as they begin to work through here and the pastors are going to work through here and they're going to begin to minister to you. Receive that healing. Amen. Come on, wait, listen, uh, Jesus, listen, he, would, he healed multitudes. He had 12 guys helping him out, amen. No, come on, amen. But listen, don't you leave. This is on you now, right, to receive. So let's turn them loose, amen. Come on, amen. Now, for some of you, listen, now some of you are going to be led. Pray ye one for another that you may be healed. We say it in Missouri, even the pipe gets wet. It's going through you, it's going to them, amen. So let's be led here today. Let's be sure that we walk out of here healed. Amen. Whenever we come to lay hands on you, be ready to receive right then. Identify what you want healed. Don't have a shotgun prayer. Just like if you went into the grocery store and bought an item, you know what you want. You know what you want. This is not a time of hesitation. God's not trying to read your mind. He's trying to bring something to you. Just like the blind Bartimaeus, he said, what do you want? He said, I want to see. Know what you want. And as soon as hands are laid on you, believe at the point of contact, you're healed at that very second, at that very moment that hands are laid on you. There doesn't need to be a lot beyond that. 
It's up to you to receive the glory of God. You came believing. That's why you're standing here. You came believing. It's time for you to do the receiving. Amen. You could receive it even before anybody gets there. Some of you can get healed standing right where you are because you have that kind of faith. You can be healed right there. So when we touch you, receive right then. Don't argue about it. Just receive it.
we are going to officially close our service. So we'll pray. Today is Hope Feeding Hope, where if you need some assistance with groceries this month, if you'll go to my right, your left, all the way down the commons, past the elevator, um, there'll be some people there to minister to you. If you could use some help, we'd love to do that. Father, thank you for this Sunday of miracles. Thank you for what's being worked in the lives of every single person that had hands laid on them. We declare your life. We declare your healing. We declare your health. Even the things that we've already seen happen in this house. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Your word is true. We thank you, Father God, that you are not a man that you should lie. We receive your word into our physical bodies. In Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. Feel free to stay as long as you'd like. We're going to continue to pray until everyone has been prayed for that wants prayer this morning. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.